Hello everybody, I hope you're all well. And please accept my apologies for being away for rather a long time due to some technical issues. The Taxi Text, Episode 4, The Final Instalment. Last time, Alice and Heather left the cottage at the end of Mansion Lane, and in her haste, Heather had forgotten the mobile phone. As they drove away, the piano in the parlour had begun to play. Alice Blue Gown The next day, they got in touch with the local historian to find out more about the mansion estate, and Heather obtained permission from the Trust for a professional paranormal investigation. The mansion had been built by Edward Bradley in 1845 and the cottage in 1880. In 1888, Edward's son George had married Elizabeth. And in 1892, Elizabeth and George were blessed with handsome twin boys, Edward and George. This photo is taken of them in 1905. They look rather glum, and perhaps understandably, as their mother contracted a debilitating illness soon after their birth, and sadly passed away in 1902. During the years Elizabeth struggled with her health, her devoted husband George acquired the services of a specialist landscape gardener by the name of Marion Kruger, who remodelled and enhanced the grounds. While she worked, her daughter Alice played with the twins under the watchful eye of the head housekeeper and gardener, Mr and Mrs O'Neill. One can only imagine how magnificent the grounds were in their heyday. George Senior had become very reclusive and withdrawn after Elizabeth's passing and the boys went to live with Mr and Mrs O'Neill in the cottage at the end of the lane. They continued their friendship with Alice until the Great War broke out in July 1914, just a few months before Alice turned 15. brothers served in the same regiment and were at each other's side in the trenches. They fought very bravely, suffering grueling conditions and unimaginable trauma. George wrote to Alice whenever he could with deep affection and poetry. Edward was unaware of this and George only read out snippets to his brother when he received a letter from Alice. Finally, they returned home from the war to end all wars in 1919. George longed to see Alice again. Edward only wanted to be home with his brother, away from the constant sound of exploding shells and the cries of the wounded. Alice also longed to be with George and sent him a photo saying she would be coming home in the new year. George placed it in an album next to a picture of his mother. So the night had arrived for the paranormal investigation team to visit the cottage. 
They had all the latest gadgets and equipment. They made a plan of all the rooms and marked particular cold spots, such as the hallway near the door to the cellar. They set up sensors and devices that could detect frequency and temperature changes, which would automatically activate high-speed digital sound and image recorders. Then the team leader walked around the rooms, saying, If there's any spirits here, please try and communicate with us. Please give us a sign. We're here to help. Then they turned all the detection equipment on, ground floor lights off, and proceeded upstairs. The bathroom yielded nothing of great interest. But in bedroom one... <laughs> They got a name. On the dresser, there was a number of watches and articles from newspapers. In bedroom two, They found no name. Hidden in the dresser were a number of letters, all from Alice. While they were investigating bedroom three, everything had begun to happen downstairs. The camera picked up a hand coming up out of the coal cellar and what seemed like an image of Heather's mobile phone. Down in the cellar... <laughs> also picked up an image. And in the parlour... In the dining room. And finally in the hallway. So now all the evidence had been obtained. Time to solve the mystery. Pause here if you'd like to put your clues together and work out what happened. The next part of this video will explain all. It was Wednesday the 20th of October 1920. 
Alice's 21st birthday. She was so excited and just couldn't wait to see George. Her taxi was very late due to the rain, and she was delighted when she heard the honk of his hooger horn. It was at this moment that a dimensional portal in time had opened, materialising Heather's phone into our modern-day Alice's taxi, exactly 100 years later, the 20th of the 10th, 20. Heather's last text to the lady of the trust had read, how can I forget? I'm on my way. I'll see you soon. All the texts that followed were from George, who was still waiting for his beloved Alice. The phone was the only way his spirit could communicate, just as he had written letters of love to her during the war. When Alice arrived at the cottage, she asked the cabbie to honk the horn, just as she'd promised George in her letter. But it was not George who came out to greet her, but Edward, who was sobbing uncontrollably. They went through into the parlour past the door to the cellar where George's lifeless body lay hidden. What's wrong? What's happened? Where's George? I want to see George, she said. Finally, Edward blurted out, Forgive me, Alice. He's dead. I don't believe you, she said. Where is he? You're lying, she replied, as Edward struggled to find the right words. It was an accident, Alice. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to do it, he cried. At that she flew into a passionate rage and screamed, Murderer! running into the kitchen. She grabbed a large knife that lay on the table next to a birthday cake. Waving it wildly in front of her, she warned, You stay back! I'm getting the police! Edward pleaded, No, no! You, you can't! I, I must explain, Alice! Wait, please! As she backed through the door into the rain. You stay back! You stay back! Edward came towards her and she slipped and fell into the coal cellar, the knife piercing her heart as she landed. Alice died before Edward could get to her. Two tragic accidents in one fateful night had left Edward heartbroken and fearful of the consequences, burying them both and over the years telling people they'd gone away to live together in another country. However, he lived with Alice's ghost, who often, like a poltergeist, would play the piano, move objects, and torment him. He would often say to her, Are you here? Until finally, Edward passed away on Sunday the 20th of October 1940, when the estate went into the hands of the Bradley Family Trust, which had been set up for the twins in 1902. Thanks to the excellent work of the paranormal team, Heather and Alice, the skeletal remains of George were found in the cellar, together with a tiny silver tinderbox which inside contained a beautiful engagement ring. Alice was found in the coal cellar, and lying next to her was Heather's mobile phone. 
although broken and very scratched. The last message could be read. Dearest Edward, we forgive you all our love from George and Alice. It was taken to Edward's grave and left there with some flowers so that he could finally rest in peace. And Alice and George were lovingly buried together with the tinderbox and the ring. Finally reunited, hand in hand, forever. And this is the story of the taxi text, the message from beyond. I hope you all enjoyed that. Thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. I'm looking forward to hearing your ideas in the comments section below as to what we can do for the next mystery story. I've got some suggestions about either Native American legends or perhaps uh, aliens, but I'm very open-minded, so please let me know so that I can put the next story together. Thank you again, everybody. See you soon. Bye. Bye.